week, week eight, we are launching our research unit. This is our second writing unit of the semester. And uh, this video, I am going to explain to you a little bit about what we are going to try to do in this research argument project. So all of these mini assignments that we will be working on over the next several weeks are going to help you with this research project. I know that research can often seem like a very daunting thing. You're like, oh my goodness, I have this research paper or this presentation that I have to do and I don't know how to go about it. It's overwhelming, it's a lot of work, so on and so forth. Um, so with this research project, you again have a little bit of flexibility of how you want to approach it and really to figure out while we're staying within the theme of happiness and dealing with those five basic questions that we've been going over with over the last uh, seven weeks, you have a say in what you want to research based in that framework that I've given you. So we have freedom within limits. It's kind of a Montessori approach if you want to think about it in that way. Uh, but so let me talk to you a little bit more about what we will be working on in week eight. Um, this week, I have materials related to research questions. So you will see in the readings that we have what is a research question from Writing Commons. There's a PDF download that you can fill out, an interactive worksheet called Developing a Research Question Worksheet that was actually created by the people in the UC library systems. And um, we also have a UC library video, very short video that, well, it comes, it's provided by the library, but I think it was recorded by somebody else uh, that the UC library just uses in their research materials. Uh, this one is called Developing a Research Question. Um, and you will see that one of the assignments, this is like the first little baby step that you have to take to do research, is figuring out your topic and figuring out some questions. So let's take a look at that research topic and research questions assignment. Um, so as it says here, the first thing you need to do for the assignment, for any kind of research assignment, is find a good research topic. And typically, that will come in the form of a question. When you can formulate a question, if you have a question in your head regarding a research problem or a research topic, then you can pursue the answer of that question, right? You want to answer that question. So if you think to yourself, hmm, what is happiness? If that's something that intrigues you, then maybe you can formulate some more questions. What do we mean by happiness? That kind of thing, right? Or what makes people happy? Uh, does technology make people happy? Does it make us happier, right? We have these questions that can kind of spout off several other questions and take you in multiple directions. So figuring out what your questions are, the ones that intrigue you the most, the ones that you want to find an answer for, will make this research project roll along a lot more easily for you. Um, when you're invested in that project, when you're invested in the topic, when it's something that you really care about, it makes research interesting. It makes pursuing that answer much more meaningful to you, right? So it's not as much of a slog. I get it. I've been through research and, and you know, sometimes it's just like, gosh, this really sucks. Especially when it's a topic that you're really not invested in, when it's a topic that you're not curious about, it's something that you don't really care about, it's a topic that somebody else has given you and it's like, oh my gosh, this is like pulling teeth, right? I get it. So hopefully with some freedom and some flexibility, um, it will be less of a horrible experience for you. That is my hope. That is my hope, folks. So in this research topic and research questions assignment, you need to figure out your topic, right? And that can be really hard. So things to keep in mind, your topic needs to be arguable, right? It needs to have some kind of scholarly value. 
but it should also be broad enough for some balanced discussion. And it needs to allow you to enter and add to what we like to call the scholarly conversation. When you watch my other video on the research project overview, you will hear me talk about this thing called the scholarly conversation. Um, it's also something that you need to be able to manage, right? So your topic, it needs to be broad in one respect, but it also needs to be narrow enough so that you can provide a detailed discussion of the relevant issues on the topic. So again, for the purposes of this class, we're gonna choose a topic that goes along with the general theme of exploring happiness. So we have those five basic topical areas that you've been dealing with over the last several weeks. Um, but I'm asking you to list two or three issues or topics that are related to those questions, right? That you're interested in exploring further and answer the following questions about each issue. What do you know and believe about this issue, right? You might have some experience with some of these issues. If you are struggling with technology usage and how it makes you feel, that is something that you might want to explore a little bit more. Do some research. What do the experts say on this topic, right? And how did you develop an understanding of the issue? Again, it could be something that you read earlier in this class that kind of sparked an interest and you were like, oh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about that, but I can't do that right now. Now is your time to do this, right? So let's take a look at the research question assignment. So this is like a two part coming up with a topic and then coming up with some questions. Um, so you need to submit two potential research questions. You can use those questions, as I said, to formulate your own specific questions. Keep in mind those guidelines suggested in the reading assignment for the week, what is a research question, as you think about your topic and the questions for research. You can also look back to previous discussions, any reading responses you may have done, or journal assignments to get some ideas of where your interests might be laying. Maybe you posed questions in a discussion board to another student, right? In your response, um, fantastic. Or maybe something, if you are in my face-to-face -face classes, maybe something came up in class that a student was discussing or maybe an issue that I raised and we just kind of touched on it briefly, but you were like, wait, I wanna know more, right? Now is your chance to ask these questions, right? And to discover what those answers are for yourself by doing the research. So here are some questions for you to get thinking about how to make up your own questions. What are the central questions that need to be addressed or need to be answered in relation to the issue that you're interested in? And what are, or what do you think would be at least two important objections to your stance or to your position on the issue. So this way we're anticipating what somebody might argue, somebody who takes the opposing view, um, and that will help you to formulate some kind of position, but also have your topic that can be a little bit arguable. Hopefully that makes sense. So the directions here are to write and submit one to two pages stating your proposed research topic, those two research questions. And then for each of those questions, I'd like you to write a paragraph for each that identifies any concerns, controversies, or problems that may come up or come up most frequently when people are talking about that topic. Um, but also I want you to think about your interest in the topic, your ability to fully research and whether or not that issue invites opposition. Um, so the this assignment has been created. It was based on an assignment uh, that first appeared in UC's Student Guide to English Composition 1001, published in 2014. Um, students who are on the Clifton campus, the main campus, and take classes there often are required to buy the student guide. Those of us who teach at the satellite campuses, the branch campuses of Claremont and Blue Ash um, often don't require that kind of a book. 
However, it is a good resource, so I try to pull information from that every once in a while when I'm creating assignments for students. So uh, that's what that note at the bottom of this, the assignment is. The assignment will be due on Sunday, um, and it is a file upload. So that is the research topic and research questions assignment. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. This is just the first step in research. So what I'd like to do in addition to the various things is talk to you about the reading annotations. This week and for many weeks to come, I am going to be asking you to show me your annotations. So essentially you are starting the research. Um, you can select a reading from the Pursuing Happiness Resources page related to your topical area. If you haven't read some of these before. Um, so we have each of these questions here. There's also a Supplemental Resources Pursuing Happiness second edition. PDF that uh, includes a lot more resources that I didn't list um, in this listing. So make sure you take a look at that PDF as well. Does this mean that you have to only pull from that resources page? No, right? <laughs> but this is a great list of resources, resources that I'm familiar with, um, but you are free to find other resources you're not limited to pulling from the Pursuing Happiness resources page or that additional supplementary PDF. Um, what I want you to do is to start reading and to start engaging with that material, annotate the things, take notes, margin notes, whatever, you know, and it can, it doesn't have to be a digital file. It can be, if you are the person who likes to get their hands on a printed copy and you like to physically write out in the margins or circle or highlight or whatever it is, um, you're welcome to do that. All you have to do for the annotation, if you do something like that, is to take a picture of the annotation um, and include it in your file upload, okay? Hopefully that makes sense as well. So you can create a document that you will upload. It can include images of your notes. If you take notes physically, like I'm a person who likes to write things down in a notebook as well as highlight or underline. Um, if I own the text myself or if it's a printed out PDF that I like to have, I just, I'm a person who likes that tangible feeling of pages or books in my hands. Um, I do know how to digitally annotate. I don't like to do it. If I don't have to, uh, because, you know, again, as I said, I'm a dinosaur, I'm old school. I like to go with physical notebooks, physical planners, pen and paper, that's me, right? You may have a whole different way of doing things. So again, if it's digital, um, you can take, you know, do a screenshot and upload the image. Um, if it's on your phone, you know how to do that, right? Hopefully. Um, so it's open to uploading files. You can also do just a text entry box if you want to use the text entry as kind of your notebook to keep track of your annotations there, that's fine. The point here is that I want to see that you are engaging with your chosen text and thinking critically about it. This will help to lay the groundwork, build good habits, get you used to researching and taking notes on things. Um, so those are the reading annotations. You will be doing this almost every week from here on out, uh, except when you have a more in-depth writing assignment that you need to do. Um, and we'll take a look at some of these in a moment. I'm going to go back to the syllabus where I describe the research project and we'll talk a little bit about that. So those are the reading annotations. You will have that due on Sunday as well. Lastly is the journal. This is just a midterm check-in. This is a very informal thing. I have a few questions that I want you to answer. This helps me to, um, to improve course design, improve the way I deliver materials and that kind of stuff. So I ask about your successes in this course. 
disappointments so far. What can I do? What can you do to help improve things? So um, please make sure that you do that. That is also due on Sunday. So back to what I said I was going to do. Let me just take a look at the module, make sure I've addressed everything here. Again, the readings, take a look at those. They will help you um, as well as the videos. There is a research project overview video. That's just essentially my argument of why research is such a vital part of uh, the college writing experience and the college experience overall. And then, um, as I said before, the developing research question. So I'm going to jump into the syllabus. We are going to take a look at the description of the research project. So this research project will take a course of seven weeks, right? It's the second half of the semester. You'll work on various steps of a chosen research project, which will consist of the following assignments. So this week, we are working on the research topic and proposal with questions from the text, right? So that is the first step. In the coming weeks, you will be doing other assignments that are research related. So uh, the second one will be a source evaluation of two sources. That will just get you used to looking at what types of sources you should be using, making sure that they're credible, so on and so forth. Then this is a really big assignment, um, an annotated bibliography of eight sources. So while I will talk in greater depth, I will have a video that explains the annotated bibliography and why it is so important. The annotated bibliography, in my opinion, is really the biggest part of research. If you can do an annotated bibliography, a research project and a research paper will essentially write itself. Um, an annotated bibliography really helps you to get to the core of a source, why it's important to your research, um, as well as learning how to do the citations for your research. The next thing that will be due is your introduction with your thesis and an outline of your project. So if you are going to go the traditional paper route, um, you will need to construct an outline that gives me some idea that you know how to plot your way through it. If you are doing a presentation, then you will need to have some idea of how you are going to do your slides or visuals. Um, as well as maybe some kind of a sketch for a script that you would give if you are going to present live or in video. Um, so there's a lot of thought that goes into that as well. If you choose to do some other kind of medium or genre, um, then you really need, so there are some multimodal options here for class projects. If you decide to go with a brochure or a poster or something else that's a little bit less ordinary, it's fine. I want to know what you are choosing to do for your project and how, you know, some kind of plan, right? So you gotta have an introduction, right? You have to have some sort of an introduction, whether it's an introductory slide, first page, what have you. Um, you will have also a thesis and something that you are going to argue in your research project. And then an outline, which just means some kind of plan for how that project is going to take form, right? Uh, traditional essay is usually the one that is most familiar with us followed up by a slide presentation. If you choose to do something different, I just need to know how you are thinking about approaching the project, right? I'm not gonna say, no, you can't do that, but I need to know what your plan is. You need to have some kind of plan. It cannot wait until the last minute. Um, we'll also do some counter argument exercises so that we can see the value of looking at the other side of the argument. Um, and lastly, you will have your presentation. So this is more for my in-class uh, section. I do have a, a class that I teach face-to-face -face, and we will be working in the last week of classes to allow students up to 10 minutes for their in-class presentations. If you're an online student and you want to do a visual, audio-visual presentation, um, 
that other students can see, we need to work that out to figure out where we can house your material so that others can see it, right? So that it can be presented to others. Um, the mode of presentation, again, will be chosen by students and it will follow the rationale for the rhetorical analysis. Um, so that is the idea for the research project, what we will be focusing on for the next seven weeks of this class. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me to get some clarification so that you understand what the overall goal here is. But for this week, we're focusing on coming up with a topic and focusing on coming up with some research questions that you will then try to answer. In the meantime, best of luck with everything. I hope you enjoy this. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.